South Fork fly fishing is as good as it gets. One of the top dry fly fishing rivers in the world. Oh, yeah! Yeah, that was he a good He coasted eat. underneath that, that for eat. a long time. That was awesome. <laughs> Today, I'm also fishing with Pete Erickson, who's one of the world's top anglers and a member of Team USA Fly Fishing, and an even better dude, as we are headhunting the South Fork of the Snake River. South Fork, where the men are men and the guys are tired. <laughs> yeah. Hey everybody, welcome to Familiar Waters and FW Fishing. I'm Mike Pulaski. Today, I am fishing the South Fork. Now, I know there's a lot of rivers out there with South Fork in the name. This is the South Fork of the Snake, and it is one of the world's top dry fly fishing rivers. It is phenomenal. It is loaded with cutthroat trout who seem to be constantly looking up. And we're going to start off with foam and head to PMDs, but we're in the summer. My guide today is a good friend, Pete Erickson. He is a member of Team USA Fly Fishing, has won on the international circuit uh, in several countries, has been a captain for Team USA, uh, has been a phenomenal guide in the area forever. And so he is well versed both as a guide, as a fisherman, um, and as a guy who's been a conservationist on the South Fork. Before we get started, don't forget, subscribe, ring the bell, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment. Love to hear from you. Yeah! Fat guy in the front. Mom Viaggi. Oh, my hands are all sunscreened. I love that. Nice. Cool. It's a good feel on the oars. Bridge pillar. Ah! <laughs> then it gets sticky later. Okay, let's buzz over to the right side. We'll cover some ground today. We'll we'll definitely blow some stuff off that looks good, but it's because we got, you know, 27, long, 27 miles. A long, long way. Of good fishing. Just a half Ooh, this. Going a little closer, maybe. Just a half this hopper slash stonefly. Up here, dragging along his little nymphy friend. Yeah. The two of us. Oh, look at that water. Come on, Cuddy. Oh. Ooh, that looks good. Good job. Just really sucking trout food. Ooh, nice. So how's it feel good to be back on the South Fork? Oh, I love it. Drive by fishing? I love this river. <laughs> there are a few rivers in the West that fish like this. It's, this is probably my favorite Western dry fly river because it fishes dry flies all the time. You can come here with dries and you have a shot any time of the year, be it PMDs, betas, the big stones, the golden stones, the sallies, everything comes off here. And it's an incredible dry fly river. And that's why I keep coming back to the South Fork. We try to do it every other year on the show because it's always something new. Now this year, we're not hitting the big bugs. This year we are in between the big bugs and the hoppers. So PMDs are gonna be king. And searching for heads, head hunting the South Fork, it doesn't get any better than that today. I don't think it's a stretch to say that the South Fork may be the top five dry fly river in the world. In the world? Yeah. Yeah, no question. It's definitely number one or two cutthroat river in the world. Head hunting a riffle coming up right here on the left. This riffle's been producing a fish or two. Oh, yeah! Yeah! That was he a good coasted eat. underneath that, that for a long time. That was awesome. <laughs> This is exactly, oh, jumper. Not a cutthroat, I'm guessing. Yeah, Let's I'm go guessing over. he's got a little bow in him. Let's go over here into the calmer water, nice. That's what I'm talking about with the South Fork. The dry fly fishing out here is just outstanding. Ooh. We're just searching right now. We've got, oh, I saw that red on him. Uh -huh. that's, a, that's a bow. Yeah. But uh, we're just out here searching right now, throwing the big foam bugs on the top and uh, getting to eat, to come out here and have these fish eat. Even the rainbows participate in it. As a PMD flies by. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, look at that. Pretty look rainbow. Yeah. All right. Little guy, little aggressive jumper guy, too. That was awesome. Nice. Woo! Look at that big caught, red handed, <laughs> red striped. He coached underneath it for a while, too. Yeah. That was cool. There you go, feller. All right. First fish. Just slime your hand. Slime it up. <laughs> All right, this thing might be history pretty soon here. The dropper? Like, like one more fish, history. Because we've had, we've already, we're already getting some nice eats. Yeah, looking up at the top one is always good. The South Fork abides. South Fork, <laughs> where the men are men and the guys are tired. <laughs> yeah, and the guys hide from the sun. It's because there's great water right here, <laughs> and then there's great water over there, and then there's great water down there. <laughs> there's so much great water. The spoil of riches. Well, we're less than 30 minutes from the launch ramp, and we are already into fish. Our setup today, I'm using a dry dropper combination. For the dry, for our top bug, 
I'm using a Chernobyl ant. And so it's a big foam fly. It's a big attractor. And the trout see it on the surface. They look up. It gets their attention. If they decide not to eat the surface bug, we have a dropper about 18 inches underneath. And it's a rainbow warrior. And so it's a very flashy little uh, PMD or Betis looking nymph. In this case, we're going after the PMDs because we're going to make it simulate the emergers of the PMDs because a PMD hatch is about to happen. And so dry dropper on the South Fork, fantastic. We're not even 30 minutes from the ramp. We're already into fish. It's a great day. It's about to get a whole lot better uh, as we hit the next riff. Caddis, PMDs, every, right. there we are. There's a fish. Woo, he's taking off. They're staging. They're obviously staging. When the, when the PMDs or pale morning duns are coming off. You want to go over river. here to the left? Yeah, that's, that's good. Ooh, fighting like a non-white fish. You got a good head down run. Yeah. But when the PMDs are coming off, these fish will stage just behind the riffle as the hatch starts, because the nymphs are in the drift. And uh, they move up into the riffles and get actually on the riffles when the hatch is in full swing. Nice fish, Mike. Thank you. Perfect spot, a spot for pre-hatch. Oh yeah, he's a happy trout. There we go. Rainbow. Another bow. <laughs> kind of a fatty. Oh, yeah. Sweet. Woo. Okay, calm down. That push is coming in. Oops. I'm going to let you have Yeah, I got you. Thank you. you. Go ahead and get those oars. Sink in the boat, probably not a good deal. Yeah, sink in the boat would be bad. Not, not quite what we're looking for. I know there's three guys in here that don't want it to sink, so. <clears throat> Need four taps? You got them. Got them. Nice fish. Pretty bow, perfect spot, perfect location. Nice and clean on the pre-stage. They're staging on those PMDs, waiting for them to come off. Good job. Thank you, sir. And uh, so you work the buckets off the riffles. If they're not in the riffles, work just behind the riffles. And keep working back until you find what stage those fish are in on the eat. Nice job. Thank you. I love this river. It's a great river. <laughs> Please, sir, may I have another? If you pay close enough attention to what's going on in the stream, the fish will literally tell you what's going on with the bugs. In this case, they're telling us that the PMDs are about to pop because these fish are staged right on the backside of riffles in a little more active water. Now, you may have noticed we're catching rainbow trout, and there's been a big deal going on on the South Fork about trying to eradicate the rainbow trout out of there so that the cutthroat uh, can survive and can thrive in that river. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. But still fishing dry dropper, got the big foam up top, got the dropper underneath, and we are still whacking on trout. Rainbows usually hang out up in this heavy stuff. Cuddies are lazy. They'll be down here right off the ledge. A lazy trout by nature. Yeah, they'll be off the soft ledge there, huh? Exactly. That's where you'll see the big cuddy head. Be on TV. <laughs> Acting tryouts right here. Yep. Get your mug on television. Oh, sexy. Come on. Somebody's uh, eat, the oh. eat the nymph, buddy. There oh, he, is. he got the nymph. Guy. He came Was that him? He got the nymph. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, he's happy too. Ooh, double duty. That's good. <laughs> that fish came up and looked at the foam. Let's roll he up. He didn't want the foam, but went back down for the natural, the nymph. Let's roll up into this soft oh. spot. Awesome. That's that, too. Yeah. It's a pretty good fish, too. Fighting like a lazy cutty. Yeah. Shit, this water's nice and soft over here, so. He says, oh, I'm just going to use the current and turn broad, so. <laughs> if only I had the girth of a permit. <laughs> Fishing sucks again today. <laughs> Oh, another another rainbow. The bows are on to eat. Oh, As you oh. can see, they've pretty much eradicated the bows out of the South Fork. I can see that. They've gotten rid of them. Our fourth in a row. Yeah. Look at that. And the rainbow warrior for the rainbow. That's awesome. Nice. This fish. Come here, buddy. Came up, <sighs> looked at the foam. I mean, it was right underneath it. He actually licked the foam, I think. He tasted it. Decided so he didn't want it turned down. And then he saw that nymph and decided that was, that was lunch. 
That was awesome. That was that's how it uh, that's that's how it should be. The excitement of missing him. And yeah. I, I knew he was gonna get that. He turned right back down to it. Too. Exactly. That's that was a great fish. Yeah, South Fork. Now you actually mentioned What's the that? rainbows on the South Fork. Exactly. They're they're hybridizing with the cutthroat, so everyone's worried that the cutthroats are gonna disappear. It's kind of a big debate, actually. Um, they want you actually to kill the rainbows yeah, if you kill catch them. them. Like, please kill every rainbow you catch, yeah. which is. It goes you know, that's way for against a different, the fly fishing ethos. That's kind of a different discussion. Um, but uh, it seems to, I don't know, it's, it's hard to tell whether, uh, whether the cutthroats are coming back or not. So yeah. I guess we'll see. But what's that, the fourth rainbow in a row you've caught or yeah, third? That's, so. that's, that's a lot of rainbows. And then the issue is this, the West Slope, the, the actually fine, sp fine spot Snake River cut, right? No, no, there are some fine spots in the South Fork, right. but they're above in the Snake proper in Jackson. Okay. And these are Yellowstone cuts. There's a few spine spots in here. Okay. So it's the Yellowstone cut. The there. Yellowstone cut. So in here, the Yellowstone cut, the the rainbow and the Yellowstone cut have the same exact uh, breeding habitat. They come up, they breed the rocks, and do all that together. So they're being hybridized out. Yeah, they hybridized. Yeah. And do you do you keep the native strain of the fish? Is that the intent? You keep great fishing because obviously the rainbow not native to this piece of water. Right. So it's a debate that goes back and forth. For fishermen, they're both great. Right. If you're a pure geneticist then you're thinking you just want the single pure species that was here to begin the with. The rainbows are a disaster for them, yeah. A disaster. So yeah. do you return it to its original state, which at this point is really undoable because you have a dam on the river. Yeah, that's that's where the debate comes. Yeah. Like, wh what is possible? Yeah, and what have you changed? So the whole the whole debate will swirl round and round, but it's against the fly fishing ethos where I'm concerned to be just bonking fish over the head. Exactly. As you're killing them. You know, exactly. killing them out here catching them. So the, yeah, it, and those are damn fun. There's the pathos. They're great. Yeah, those are great. <laughs> All right, let's get, a, on. let's get another rainbow. Yeah. So that's a look at the very beginning, about the first hour of our South Fork fishing trip. It's about to get a whole lot hotter coming up. We try to keep our videos down under that 20 minute mark. And so that way you guys can get your fishing fix and we can keep bringing you great stuff every week. So we will be back, more fishing from the South Fork. In the meantime, we got some tarpon coming at you, some redfish coming at you. Alaska trout coming at you. So a lot of great videos coming up. Make sure you subscribe, give a thumbs up, uh, hit that bell. That way you get notified every time we have new stuff coming out. And please leave us a comment down below. We would love to hear from you. For now, I appreciate you watching. I'm Mike Velosky for Familiar Waters and FWFishing.com. That is our day fly fishing the South Fork, the beginning of it. We'll be coming at you with a lot more trout action. 